Good evening, my fellow scientists. It is Tuesday, December 5th, 2017, and I would like to talk about the iron batteries more today. For new viewers, I have been working for the past year on developing an all-iron battery chemistry for the storage of renewable energy cheaply and in a non-toxic battery format. If folks want to build it themselves, it should be safe, and if people in education want to demonstrate how to store energy using a rechargeable battery chemistry they can build in the lab, this might be for them. So how do you build an all iron battery? Well, you need an iron metal anode and a iron salt to accept the electrons at the cathode. And that's all well and good, but finding a good iron salt that can accept those electrons turned out to be quite the problem. Turns out that iron EDTA works fairly well. And the second problem that we have been facing is the fact that iron corrodes rather quickly in water, especially when you completely destroy the oxide layer on the surface of iron. So normally when you rust, when iron rusts, it forms a bit of rust on the surface and that protects the iron surface a little bit from further corrosion, at least it slows it down. However, if you put iron EDTA in the solution, that really just it eats the rust away as it forms. As a consequence, there's no oxide layer, there's no protection in the iron is very susceptible to oxidation, especially by oxygen. Oxygen in the air turned out to be a big problem. How did we know that? Well, it's possible that the water itself was reacting that with the iron and that that was producing hydrogen gas very slowly, not enough to build up, but still enough to be present. Still possible, but definitely oxygen in the air was a big problem. The way I did that was to compare iron in iron EDTA in air versus iron in iron EDTA in a nitrogen atmosphere in a closed bottle. And it turns out that in open air, this coil of iron wire loses something like 17 milligrams per day. So it's losing mass pretty quickly. On the other hand, sealed in a nitrogen filled bottle, the whole thing loses three, two, three uh, milligrams per day. So pretty clearly air oxygen is a big deal for this. And that has implications for how to build an iron cell and how long an iron cell is going to last, how much energy it's going to lose over time. In a big cell with thick walls that protect it from gaseous oxygen, we can expect to have very little losses, but the losses we do incur, we would need to compensate for by adding more water and recharging more aggressively to drive off the oxygen that has been reduced. In any case, one little step forward, we're still looking for an undergraduate who would like to come and join the project, but we will keep you all updated on that progress. We'll keep you updated on progress on the cell itself. We can now start to build bag cells with some confidence that they're gonna last a couple of days before they oxidize. And we will keep you updated on that as well. So do tune in Monday through Friday. We talk about iron batteries and chemistry and science and all the kind of things that interest me right here in the Allen Lab.